Hi, I'm Emma. And I'm Avram. From Ion Law Partners. And today we wanted to have a little conversation about corporations and, you know, what are they? Why would you have one? And, you know, what are the positive, you know, the advantages and what are the disadvantages? So Avram is a corporate lawyer at Ion. And I thought, you know, this is a great time to just kind of chat about it. I'm Dark. very happy you called me in today. You know, this is a great <laughs> topic. And I think that a lot of people actually want to know what, you know, what's the deal with corporations and, why do so many people sometimes have so many corporations and so many questions? So let's first start with what is a corporation? So a corporation is, to boil it down, it's just a business structure. It's a separate legal entity from the, its business owners and it's a vehicle to either hold property, run business or invest. And it gives its owners or its shareholders a ton of advantages. From a tax perspective to a financial planning perspective, it gives business owners and shareholders an opportunity to be a little bit more in control of what happens with their finances. Okay, so I'm going to back you up here yeah. for just a second. Yeah. So we said, okay, so it's a separate legal entity. Yeah. So it's a different person, yeah. right? Um, and so I understand we can have a, a provincial corporation yeah. and a federal one. Yeah. Okay. So in Ontario, uh, we are governed under the Business Corporations Act, uh, and it's very similar to the federal, you know, Canada Business Corporations Act. And it's important to consider this because when you have a corporation and down the line, you may want to sell this off or you may want to merge this with another corporation, you need to make sure that they're under the same jurisdiction or the same governing laws. And also these, you know, jurisdictions or these legislations give you the rules of you know, conduct for your corporation. They tell you what you need to do in terms of having directors and shareholders and what the rules are there or what reports you need to file. Okay, so what would what would people consider when deciding whether they want a federal corporation sure. as opposed to a provincial one? Yeah, so the biggest consideration is where are you going to be doing business? Do you want your corporation to, you know, operate in... Alberta and Ontario and Nova Scotia, you know, are you going to have Canada-wide operations? Another consideration is the type of business that you're going to have. If you have, let's say, a securities trading company and that's what you're starting, it has to be a federal corporation because it's governed by federal legislation. So those considerations, you know, in, on the planning stages, really, what am I going to be doing and where am I going to be doing it? Okay, so another question is, okay, let's say I'm running a restaurant, yeah. okay, and, and I might want to consider expanding to another province. Is it advisable to maybe, because I, I'm pretty sure, right, we can, you can have multiple corporations in different provinces. Absolutely. So would that also be something that, you know, would be a, a consideration, the same sure. corp, but various so, ones in different products. So what people provinces. often do, let's say they'd have a parent company and that parent company, let's just say it's one, two, three foods, okay? Mm -hmm. And they actually will have a separate corporation in Ontario, British Columbia, you know, Alberta, where they can operate and, and it'll all be connected still to its owners through that parent company. Conversely, you can also, for example, create a franchise. A franchise, you can have deals within each province and territory under that legislation, but it doesn't necessarily have to be incorporated under a different corporation. It's very important to not just consult lawyers like us, but also tax professionals, because a lot of the time, if one corporation is making money and another corporation is losing money, there's certain planning elements that they'll be able to give you, which will be a huge advantage. For example, you know, when you compare it to a sole proprietorship, you don't have that type of perspective. You don't have the option of saying, oh, I'm going to transfer my losses from one corporation and offset the earnings from this corporation instead it's all on the individual and your tax at this high marginal tax rate okay so i'm going to back you up just sure. to kind of like simplify this just okay. a little bit right because when you have a separate legal entity this corp and it's losing money yeah right so what avram is saying is that if you have another corporation that's making more money and you want to offset because you know the more the money taxes, you make the more that yeah. you get taxed and you want to kind of offset that and bring this income down, you can use the losses from this corporation yep. to offset that one. Uh, so that's another, where we're talking about 100%. tax planning techniques. And another great advantage that, for example, small businesses have is that they're often, you know, given a small business, you know, tax credit or, 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 or bonus on the first, for example, $500,000 that they've earned. 
And that's great because when you're starting out, you're not going to be taxed like a huge corporation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the purposes of having a corporation is like, you know, one is he, he Avram talked about it, limit liability, right? Because yeah, it's a separate what I was person. Say next. Right? It's probably the what I would consider the biggest advantage. Well, I, I would say yes and no, right? Well, because like know, there are some circumstances where you can't – like people think that if you have a corporation, all of a sudden you just put this shield in front of you of and course. no one can ever sue you. Of course. Right? And I think I mean, that's some – there is Yeah, yeah. There's definitely circumstances, especially when there's fraud or any kind of like mismanagement where they can pierce the veil, as they say, and go after the owner or directors, people in charge of running the company personally. But still, the limited liability – is a major advantage compared to every other business structure because the shareholders, the people that invest in this corporation, the people that own this corporation are limited to what they put into this corporation. And typically the management is separate from the, those shareholders. Yeah. So that limit of, of what you're risking is is a, a different consideration, you know, when compared to a partnership or a sole proprietorship where, you know, your house is on the line. Yeah. Your, your, your assets are on the line. Yeah. If you mess up, and you don't have insurance to you're cover sued, that. And they can you're come sued, after you and they'll come stuff. after you, and they'll go. I mean. So let's 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 also talk about a little bit. What are all these things we're talking about? Directors, officers, shareholders. Sure. I don't think everybody really knows, right? Yeah. So you know, the corporation is a legal entity, and it the decisions. So basically, decisions are made by way of paper, right? Yeah. Like we we make these resolutions, and it's the corporation talking. Uh, yeah, right? people say that's one of the biggest disadvantages. It's that it's this structure that has to be followed and and you have all these requirements of making resolutions and filing this and filing that yeah. you know your annual earnings and, and so on and so forth so there are a lot of stringent requirements for running this operation mm -hmm. but you know everybody has its role to play so the yeah. shareholders you know in uh, so wait i'm gonna back you sure. up there for a second okay because i do agree with you and i say this all the time right you can't have the benefits of having a corporation and yeah. not have to abide by the rules of upkeeping Absolutely. it. If you're going to have a separate legal entity, then yeah. like if that legal entity is going to make decisions and things like that, it's got to be recorded because yeah, we absolutely. can't actually ask the physical person. Yeah, right? But let's back up for just a second, okay? Because I know you know way more than everybody else out there <laughs> on corporations. Um, so I want to distinguish who, what are the directors? Yeah. So tell me first, who are the directors of a corporation? So typically, directors are the people that are in charge of the management and direction that the corporation is taking. So they're separate from everybody else. They can be shareholders or they, it can be a sole director shareholder situation. But essentially, they're the people in charge of the company. So they're they, making decisions. They make the decisions. Right? They, make, they have to approve changes. They have to be the group or the person who okays everything at the end. Okay, and they're registered with the government. Yes. So we so, have we know we have a link to like yeah. a real human being who's making decisions Absolutely. for the corporation. So you actually it's by law you're required to keep a registry of your directors. And that doesn't just include like their names, it's like address, you know, how you contact them, mm -hmm. when they were a director and so on. So Okay. So now let's move on to officers. Yeah. What's the distinction between directors and officers? So not every director is an officer and vice versa. Like an officer will have a specific role within a corporation and also has the ability to sign on behalf of the corporation. So this can be somebody like a treasurer or a secretary. Um, but often you'll have a director occupying, you know, both of those roles. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a director that's also a secretary and another director that's also the treasurer and another director that's yeah. the president, you know, and each of these have a specific function. And the good thing is, you know, you define these rules and, and, and roles like within the corporation, but they're also codified in the legislation. So mm -hmm. they have their job and they're supposed to do it according to the rules as set by, for example, the Ontario Business Corporations Act. Okay, so we have directors who are on the hook with the government and like, I mean, they're registered with the government. We know who is responsible for making decisions for the corporation. Then we have officers who aren't necessarily directors, so they're not necessarily registered with the government, yeah. but they are allowed to do certain things for the corporation, well, you, right? Well, you still have to, like, for example, when you file and you register with the government, you still have to name who the officers are. So if, for example, I created a corporation, when I'm filling out those forms and submitting them, it'll ask, you know, director, since when, you know, or until when, and if there's a change, and then it'll give you an option, say, for officers, secretaries, and it'll give you a whole slew of... Yeah roles that need to be occupied. So they will still have to put their name on paper. 
Okay, that's interesting. Um, now let's talk about the shareholders. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, because people are often, I don't know if people really understand, like, who owns a corporation, yeah. right? Yeah. Who owns a corporation? The shareholders. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> when people often say, like, you know, I own a company, what they're saying is that I own the shares to this company, and those shares have specific rights associated to them. Corporations are allowed to, you know, list common shares and preferred shares, you know, and basically in any limited, unlimited number as they determine in their bylaws. But ultimately what it boils down to is the type of owner you are is determined by the type of share you have. Yeah. So if you were to start a corporation, you know, Emma Real Estate, Mogul, whatever. <laughs> you talk you'll, like real estate. You'll, you'll, you'll basically have the option of one, putting yourself as director and then being the sole shareholder and director or having somebody run it for you as director yeah. and you being the sole shareholder. Okay, so I think that the point here is that, you know, this this corporation is a legal entity and you can swap and have different people that are either making decisions for it and also, th which are directors or officers, yeah. right? And then you will also have your shareholders who are like actually the owners, right? And so what does that mean? It means that if this company is going to get sold yeah. or if the company is going to pay out um, dividends, which is kind of money that you pay out to shareholders on their based, shares. Yeah, based on the performance right? of the company. Yeah. Exactly. The shareholders also play a, a key role, for example, in the beginning of a corporation's life like the corporation and its relationship to its shareholders there's a lot of financial benefits that the corporation can also receive it can take loans from the shareholders mm -hmm. for example and it's a safe way for you know people to be able to continue to contribute and then eventually get their money out at a lower tax bracket okay this leads us to talk about kind of the multiple things that you can do with corporations yeah. right because and and why you say that we have to consult our financial advisors, really accountants. Um, it's, a, it's a joint thing, I would say, between yeah. lawyers and accountants, right? Because accountants will say, you know, what kind of share structure will be beneficial to distribute money in accordance with whatever you want, right? So maybe you want to put your spouse on or your kids yeah, on and you want right. to give, you know, some money to certain shareholders or other. Maybe some shareholders have the right to vote and yeah. to kind of make them decisions decisions yeah. with respect to the, the operating of the of the corporation and other ones might be silent investors yeah right so when you're making a company and you want to maybe go out and get investment money and you want them to be silent you create another Absolutely. class of shares right so it's really like the the things that we can do with different classes of shares it's, is there's pretty a, broad it's very broad and it's also determined by the corporation right so any decision that you make like this one, it has to be approved by the shareholders, mm -hmm. you know, and it's often presented through resolutions from the directors. So what happens is shareholders in their by in the bylaws of the corporation will have all these rules around when a meeting is called, and meetings have to be called annually, and the type of votes that uh, you know need to be cast for specific decisions to be made. But ultimately, it all comes down to how do you want this corporation to run? Because as the owner or the person who's creating this entity, you are making a decision that's not only like for this moment in time, but also for how it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. And the power that you choose to give, you know, to shareholders is an important consideration because if your corporation grows very, very quickly and becomes very large, mm -hmm. there's a lot more at stake. And it's not simply Emma Real Estate Incorporated making the decisions. It's also Joe Schmo, you know, Alex, this guy, and... Yeah. Sarah, that guy. Okay, so uh, obviously there's a lot to think about <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to, 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 to choosing to make a corporation. Yeah. I think that um, ultimately, let's just recap some of the advantages, sure. right? So I think the first thing we said was it's, it's, the li liability issue. Yeah, it's very good in terms of protecting you and your investment, whether, you know, like the corporation is operating or not in terms of if you're going to get sued or not. So what you have in there is going to stop at what you put in there, and it doesn't go past the corporation unless there's been any kind of fraud. or. Okay, so let's give an yeah. example. Let's give an example, sure. right? So let's just say you're a painter, mm -hmm. and you have Painting Homes Incorporated. Yeah. And you accidentally paint over... A Something pa really pricey. A, 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 a red <laughs> A Van Gogh. Home. You're a Van Gogh. <laughs> you, you made a cardinal error, and now... <laughs> You know this this priceless. I'm getting thing. sued. I'm getting sued. Getting the painting sued. The company's getting sued. The owner comes in and sees, look, my starry night. Look what you did. You know, hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, you. 
Is it really hundreds of millions? I think that's an oh, exaggeration. Yeah, no. Hundreds of millions. Van, Van Gogh's are you? Yeah, I know. But anyways. Okay, anyways. anyways. Point is. You so receive, I only have 10,000 bucks in the company. At that point, uh, the company itself will have to go to court and, and or try to settle it. But really, if you don't have insurance to cover the damage. That I lose, I collapse my company. Yeah. You but could. my personal assets are safe. Yes. Right? Basically. Unless I purposely. I feel like this example. Unless I purpose, <laughs> okay, okay. But wait, if I purposely, let's say I have my own art collection on yeah. the side yeah. and I want to ruin your art collection okay. in order to bring up the value of mine and okay. I purposely <laughs> paint over your Van Gogh. Well, I'd probably be suing you like, like, like civilly and like. You could, yeah, all type, but it would but, pierce the veil, right? Well, I'm not too sure if in that scenario hmm. if it'll pre pierce the veil. Piercing the veil is more, for example, if a corporation makes a decision that's not in the best interest of the corporation. So let's just say, for this painting company, there's more than one sharehold, right? Yeah, so and my investors over here in the painting yeah. company... So what will happen is that... They don't want the company to collapse. No, so if I purposely go they, out and, yeah, you know... They'll turn on you. And then, basically, you will become personally liable because the direction that you chose to take the company in is not what the shareholders wanted. They didn't want to paint Very over Very interesting. I feel like this example probably isn't the best we example. We can play with new examples. But, but it, it's taking it. <laughs> the point is that piercing the veil happens, for example, if you're defrauding your shareholders or if you're mismanaging the corporation and it leads to, like, big trouble on the outside. Okay. So, Okay. That's, that's okay. I got you. I got you. And I think we could probably do a whole other video yeah. on piercing the corporate veil. Yeah. So um, also just to, to, to note that often that includes some criminal liability and the court determines when the veil is pierced. Yeah. So you like, can't get away from fraud. Like you can't be a criminal yeah, and hide yeah. behind a corp. So we talked about liability as a, yeah. as an advantage. And then there's the, the, the tax planning. Tax planning. Right? Yeah. And, and, and how you structure your finances. Like you have a lot of advantages and you have a lot of choices to make in sitting down with a tax professional, they'll tell you, listen, I understand you want one corporation, but really what you need is three. Yeah, so, you know, let's expand on this a little bit, right? Because your, your accountant might say, okay, if you, see, if you make money as a sole proprietor, as an individual person, you have to claim that income under your own name. Yeah. And in Canada, we have a graduated tax um, system where the more money you make, the more taxes you pay, yeah. right? But the thing is that corporations have different tax rates. And so yeah. if you don't take money out of your corporation, you keep it in the corporate bank account, you keep yeah. it in corporate assets. If it makes money, it's at a lesser, much less. a much lesser um, bracket. bracket. So yeah. you could keep making investments, you could keep doing things like that and have less taxes. You know, of course, I, I, when you take the money out to yourself personally, sure. your accountant will decide, right? Is it dividends? Yeah. Is it a salary? And there's all types of ways that we can take money out that'll be more yeah, tax exactly. advantageous and like uh, what people don't realize is that there's a lot of actual like family planning for example that yeah. is also considerable for your corporation like people you know they don't pay for for example their cars out of their own pocket they do it as a corporate expense it's an expense from the corporation and the tax that they end up paying and the expense that they incur is actually you know claimable mm -hmm. against the expenses of the corporation for what it needs to run so you know, there's expense a lot. Expense it, right? There's, <laughs> just expense it, yeah. Like there, they'll, you know, there's a Always lot. Always consult of, your accountant. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But no, but like there's a lot of like creative ways to be able to fold things into your corporation, and that's why you know accountants often say that multiple corporations can be advantageous. And then the last thing is, of course, like when you're when you're selling a business, yeah. right? That's like a capital asset. It's like, it's like real estate. So you have capital gains associated with yeah. it, right? Yeah. So if you have your own private corporation, there are some advantages there yeah. also, Absolutely. right? From tax perspective when you're selling. Absolutely. So interestingly enough, when you're actually selling your business, there's two ways to do this. You can do this through shares, which is, you know, you just swap the ownership of the corporation. I just sell you my shares and exactly. you become the shareholder. And then I become the, the, yeah. the sole shareholder and now I technically own the business. Yeah. Or it can be done through asset purchase. So that means that you're essentially buying up all of the assets that the corporation has accumulated since it. But you're not started. taking over the legal entity. It's just yeah. you're just going to buy the stuff that is you're, owned by the corporation. Well, it, you'll eventually take over the legal entity. But like if the 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 point is that now all of its assets are are out of that yeah. structure. Isn't there a lifetime capital gains exemption? 
There is. There is. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, uh, you know, there are some rules and whatnot, but just like how you would have a an exemption for your primary residence in terms of capital gains, there's also the lifetime capital gains exemption, which gives you a deduction from like the profit that you that you make from selling a business, and it has to be incorporated, mm -hmm. and so you don't get That's, that same yeah. tax benefit. So like we we're not financial advisors or accountants by any means, but we yeah. do work conjunctly with them, yeah. and so it's always kind of like that joint effort in in creating sure. a plan structuring for your, a deal basically for your corporation uh that's great so any any last tips that you would give somebody considering incorporating honestly you know call us or a professional of your choosing but give people a call because they're actually willing to sit down and talk with you and and run these scenarios out and if you have you know an idea i want to start a company or a corporation i think it can help me you know you're probably right and I think that a lot of people don't consider the advantages that can be reaped from starting a corporation, even for, you know, uh, operating and managing their personal finances or personal yeah. assets. So I think that, you know, all, often people have this idea of, oh, I'm starting a corporation. Now it's basically going to be a full-time job, this type of thing or that type of thing. Think of a corporation more instead of as a vehicle to help you achieve what you want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on that note, talk to us. Because we'll help you get there. <laughs> and I'm just going to add, you know, I'm going to add to say uh, on our website, actually, we have a checklist of things to consider. And I think the number one step, I think, also is, you know, sit and think, what is what is your goal? Like, what are you trying to achieve, yeah, right? Exactly. Are you building a business or do you want to start, like, an investing strategy? Sure. You want something, like, that pass on to, you know, your loved ones and create a legacy? Or do you so want I it just to hold assets? Or just exactly, exactly, right? And I think when you have the purpose, it really helps us and your accountants really Really understand you know are you going to be involving other individuals yeah. later are you looking for investors are you looking for partners or is this really just for you Absolutely. to lower your tax bracket so I think that's the number one thing yeah. and then you know download our checklist and then go through that with your accountant yeah. call us sure and then you know those are kind of the things that'll get you rolling onto uh, also if you have any other points that you want us to discuss leave them in the comments yes we will absolutely be happy to have a conversation and Touch on what you need to know. Well, yeah. until next time, hope that was helpful. And like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. That's right. <laughs>